going to look at what's called the taxi cab metric. We start by considering two points, P and Q, in the usual coordinate system, our usual XY coordinate system. And we're going to define distance differently than what we usually define it. So we'll define it as the absolute value of x1 minus x2 plus the absolute value of y1 minus y2. So if we have two points in our coordinate plane, P and Q here, we usually draw the line segment between them and try to find that distance. And that's typically how we find distance. With this method, essentially what we're doing is we're only being able to move up and down in left and right. And that's how we determine our distance, the length of this plus the length of this. This is why it's known as the taxicab metric. The idea being that all of our streets are in a grid and so it's how far we have to go in the taxicab in order to get to the destination. Let's suppose we have a circle centered at the point HK and radius R. The equation for circles is given by absolute value of x minus h plus the absolute value of y minus k equal to r. In order to actually show this, let's let p be a point on my circle. Then I know the distance between my point p and my center c is equal to r by definition of the circle and what the radius actually is. Well, by definition of this distance, the distance between p and c would be x minus h, absolute value plus absolute value of y minus k, which is equal to r, which does give me this formula for the circle. Next thing I want to do is find the equation of the part of the circle centered at 0, 0 with radius r that's in the second quadrant. We know the formula for the circle is the absolute value of x minus h plus absolute value of y minus k equal to r. Letting h and k be 0 and 0 gives me this equation here. So the equation of the circle centered at 0, 0 with radius r is the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y equal to r. Since we specifically want the part in the second quadrant, we know that x needs to be negative and y needs to be positive, which gives us negative x plus y equal to r. If we were to actually have our coordinate plane, this would look like a line segment with positive slope that actually intersects at 0 r and negative r 0. The next thing I want to do, here's a triangle. My vertices are given by 2, 2, 1, negative 1, and negative 1, 1. And I want to show that this is an equilateral triangle under the taxicab metric. It is absolutely not equilateral under our standard distance formula, but let's see about this taxicab metric. Let's start by finding the distance between a and b. This is the absolute value of 2 minus negative 1 plus the absolute value of 2 minus 1. Simplifying that gives me 3 plus 1 is equal to 4, so the distance between a and b is equal to 4. Next, let's consider the distance between b and c. The formula for the metric gives me the absolute value of negative 1 minus 1 plus the absolute value of 1 minus negative 1. And simplifying this gives me 2 plus 2, which is equal to 4. Finally, let's consider the distance between a and c. My formula gives me the absolute value of 2 minus 1 plus the absolute value of 2 minus negative 1, which simplifies to 1 plus 3, or 4. So since all the sides are equal, we now have that this is an equilateral triangle. Here I have two triangles, and I have certain things that I can identify as congruent. In particular, we can see both angle A and angle X are right angles. So I do have that they're congruent. In addition, you can see that the distance between A and B is 6. The distance between X and Y, if we use the taxicab metric, is going to be 3 plus 3, which is also 6. So we do have that segment AB is congruent to segment XY. And similarly, for the same reasoning, segment AC is congruent to segment XZ. So now I have two sides that are congruent as well as the included angle. However, we should feel pretty comfortable that these are actually not congruent. 
So that's going to cause a problem. This taxicab metric is a counterexample to our SAS hypothesis that we want to be true. 